Tropical Storm Ernesto is likely on the horizon as we get on the other side of the weekend. Anybody in the Caribbean and even the United States needs to keep a close eye on this one. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. Here is our tropical wave as we jump right into things. The wave itself is right here in between the Lesser Antilles and Africa. The development zone here highlighted in orange by the National Hurricane Center. This is where over the next couple of days, likely by the end of the weekend or early next week, that we could have our next tropical depression form and most guidance suggests that this thing is going to get pretty strong likely up in this region around the Turks and Caicos and the Bahamas we're going to get to that coming up in a couple of minutes though first we're going to be watching through the lesser Antilles toward Puerto Rico the Virgin Islands into the Dominican Republic and then into all of the Leeward Islands as well for the potential to be impacted by at least a tropical depression on the other side of the weekend. So we're going to be talking about that before we get into some of what is steering this thing. I do want to go over a couple of models here just to kind of give you a timeline. So we're looking at Tuesday. This is going to be Tuesday of next week. This is going to be August the 13th. So the 12th to the 13th, Monday into Tuesday, watching a week system. Now, at this point, we do have a little closed circulation. This is the GFS model, by the way. And the scale for the wind speeds are right up at the top here in the banner. So we're looking like we could have a tropical storm at this point by Tuesday. Taking this out a little bit further toward Puerto Rico, still dealing with the tropical storm. And then at least according with the GFS, and we're going to break down some of the ensembles in just one second to show you the wide range of solutions still looking like a tropical storm as it heads toward uh, the Dominican Republic and Haiti and then eventually emerging through the Turks and Caicos into the Bahamas and then toward uh, the United States. You do see that likely turn and tug to the north close now this is what we're going to have to watch for the united states maybe not as much so for florida but as we get into the carolinas and then maybe the northeast for some shenanigans and i'll show you why that is uh with the steering current i think this is going to be extremely important here so basically in the early going we have this big uh high pressure center that's going to continue to guide our tropical wave to the west and here are the dates in in the colors here and that where you see the numbers those are the dates so again about the 13th closing in on the northeast caribbean on the 14th give or take we're talking about this entity being around puerto rico and then again this is the fan of what the outcomes of the probabilities are possibly going to be as we move forward down the line here now this is getting about a week out so this is where things can really change but i wanted to show show you this uh, because this is the things that we're going to be tracking and we're going to be looking at the different model solutions coming up in just one second but it's going to, going to likely round the weakness of this area of high pressure due to the fact that we have this upper low that's kind of hanging off the southeast corner of the United States so what this does is this entity here that upper low down towards the deep south does help to pull likely Ernesto up out of the Caribbean, taking it toward the Turks and Caicos, maybe as far west as the Bahamas, and then eventually sliding it to the north. Now, we could eventually have some shenanigans with this upper low, and I'm going to show you much more about that uh, as we take a look at some of these longer range models going forward. For that, I do want to show you the European ensembles at first. Remember, the ensemble forecast is what you want to be looking at in at this stage of the game we don't have a storm yet we don't have a center yet so there are different initial conditions put into each one of these lines here and then it gives us a wide range in the outcome so that we can kind of get an idea it looks like this one's not going into the western gulf per se it does look like it has a decent opportunity to curve that would put Bermuda at risk. And then there are a few members that do get it close to Florida and then close to the Carolinas. The one thing I want to point out here, and again, this down here is towards uh, the 12th where you see my mouse scrolling around. Uh, likely a tropical depression, maybe a tropical storm by this point. And then there's a big consensus that it does lift up out of the Caribbean and then potentially near the Turks and Caicos. Bermuda is hanging out up here and then the Bahamas. So really... That's going to be in the realm of this thing getting to be on the stronger side. I do think we're looking at a hurricane at some point in this area, and I think there's a potential for a major hurricane as well. I think this could end up being our second major hurricane of the season. Hopefully, this splits the difference between the United States and Bermuda and goes out to sea. But as I'm going to show you in a second, 
there could be some shenanigans with this. So here's the deal with this wave. Again, there are a few members close to Florida. Again, most of them want to take that route out to sea. And by the way, these colors, once you start getting into these pink colors, that means that we're talking about a pretty strong hurricane as well. So that's something that we're going to be watching for over uh, the next couple of days. Now, we're going to go back to, and really over the next 7 to 10 days, I want to go back to the steering graphic because this is really beyond the seven day outlook here it's once we get into that 18th 19th and 20th that's when we could really have some shenanigans at play this upper low that's hanging off the coast it likely will help to protect florida but what this does depending upon where the storm is in relation to that upper level system uh the upper low can actually snatch the storm and then yank it back to the west. We've seen this a, a couple of times. Uh, Hurricane Sandy was one of those where it was dealing with, a, it was going north, and there was an upper trough, and it yanked it right back into the United States and obviously did a lot of damage. So now I want to show you um, a couple of actual model runs. This is going to be the GFS. And this is one of the reasons why I know I've, I've seen a lot of comments that, okay, this is a fish storm. Number one, it's not going to be a fish storm because it's likely going to impact the Caribbean. Number two, if it does make a hard turn, then Bermuda is going to be at risk. And if it turns a little more gradual, then that's going to put the Turks and Caicos, the Bahamas, maybe the extreme east coast of Florida, although that looks unlikely. But certainly at this point, the Carolinas or New England will be in play. So... Be careful when you just start throwing out the terms fish storms because this one's likely going to impact some people the strength to be determined especially in the early going of this so this is the point gfs now and i just said not to look at this because we want to be able to see the wide range of outcomes hurricane hunters haven't been out there the data is uh is not prolific by any means but it does have something coming into the carolinas and this is in the realm of possibilities because of the steering, the, the tropical steering currents. Now, the deal with that is, and I always say this, uh, you have to be mindful of where your source is coming from and the models are guidance, not gospel. We're looking at a model. Uh, what is this? This is 228 hours out. So this is Monday, uh, Sunday, August 18th, mind you. Um, but the deal with it is, I just told you about that we have the meteorological mechanism so to speak, to be able to guide that into the mid-Atlantic or to the northeast, depending upon where that upper low sets up. Now, we're not going to know exactly where that goes until we get a storm to form and we get good hurricane hunter data up in those things. But that is one thing I wanted to show you. I want to show you the European solution. And you see, uh, watch at the bottom of your screen. It lifts to the north. There's the storm itself. It looks like, again, we're going to be nice and safe. This thing is going in between the U.S. and Bermuda. We're good to go. But then look at the last couple of frames here. It starts to head back to the west, back toward New England, and that's going to be courtesy of that upper low there. So the point I'm trying to make with this is that we have the steering setup identified as a possibility of that happening but we also have model guidance suggesting that could happen uh, the icon does not go out that far it did do a very good job with uh barrel and with debbie so i wanted to show you this for the short term there's august 14th um and sliding up through the turks and caicos as a strengthening storm likely a hurricane at this point and this one bends away faster remains to be seen what again as the, the icon only goes out uh, through the 17th, it does have it much slower, so maybe it misses its kind of ride back into the United States, which would be obviously a good thing, but there's a lot to iron out beyond the next seven days. I think it is pretty clear, though, that likely a tropical depression or tri tropical storm going to be impacting the Caribbean, though, on the other side of the weekend. Alrighty, guys, if you found this content helpful, please do me a favor. Hit that thumbs up button if you want to continue to talk about the weather with us here in this growing weather community. Hit that subscribe button for me and we will catch you next time.